Bishop E.G. Richardson of Philadelphia, president of the Anti-Saloon League of America, sounds the League's keynote at its 27th National Convention. The price in suffering and sorrow is going to be a very great one. Dr. Ira Landrip, superintendent of the Anti-Saloon League in Indiana, also speaks. We will plow up our cotton, but we will not plow up our boys and girls. We will kill our little pigs, but we will not kill our little children. The motto of the people in Texas is, on with the battle. Chicago, Illinois. Here's the railroad man's answer to the airplane. A new streamlined train built entirely of aluminum that is capable of maintaining a speed of 110 miles an hour. It's ready now for its first test since being turned over to the Union Pacific Railroad by its manufacturers. Hailed as the forerunner of a new era in rail transportation, it's expected to cut traveling time between here and the West Coast by 20 hours. No vibration either. Meals can be served and eaten in comfort, even at a speed of one and a half miles a minute. It means the end of the bridge game on the 515. <laughs> Uncle Sam's new air postman. The Army's expert aviators are getting final instructions for flying the mail over the U.S. And here are the big planes that will do the job. Almost 12,000 miles of airlines are being manned by Army flyers. Several hundred Army lieutenants and captains are set for their new task. The mail couldn't be in safer hands. The speedy fighting planes make 130 miles an hour. And there she goes, the new Army air mail. Birds of war on a mission of peace and utility. How different from the first time the Army flew the mail. 1918 President and Mrs. Wilson are out for an auspicious event. The first airmail letter from the President to the New York Postmaster and it inaugurates a new era in postal service. These historic pictures were taken by the Army Signal Corps and are among the prized possessions in War Department archives. The pilot of the first flight was Lieutenant George L. Boyle. With the President's Godspeed, the first U.S. airmail flyer takes off for New York in an old wartime Jenny and goes 25 miles without stopping. <laughs> Buffalo, New York. Paul Runyon is coming in strong in the 36-hole final for the National Professional Golf Championship here on the Park Club Links against Craig Wood. It's been a neck-and-neck -neck battle, and now they're playing an extra hole. And still they're tied. And so they're faced with a second extra hole. Uh-oh, Runyon's in the rough. But he makes a nice pitch, and he's in the clear again. The crowd's at fever heat. Now for the last green, the 38th hole. In one of the most thrill-packed games golf fans ever saw, Runyon sinks it to win the title. Runyon is a White Plains New York pro, formerly an assistant to the man he just defeated.